What's up guys? We are here at Mason Park where Braze Bayou meets Buffalo Bayou, maybe just half a mile down to the east. Now we're going to fish Braze Bayou with a number of techniques. I've got three different rods with us, light tackle, bass rig, and traditional English carp rig. I brought a variety of baits with us, everything from ground bait, bread, corn, some worms, and artificial lures. Braze Bayou is, in my opinion, the number one best secret in Houston fishing. Now, a couple of disclaimers. This water is not clean. Don't eat anything out of here. Number two, it's full of invasive species. But for me, uh, as a biologist, as someone who loves animals in general and fish particularly, I love to see how many species I can pull out of this waterway. That's why I like to fish it. That's why I consider it to be Houston's best kept fishing secret. Because most people just don't know how many incredible animals are right here in this one body of water. So the first thing I want to try is an artificial. I'm going with the classic MEPS here. We've been having a lot of success with that lately. I mean, it's a tried and true lure. It's a wire with a piece of steel, a spoon, and a hook. So I'm just going to have a few shots with this. I've got a fairly short trace on here. I might have to lengthen that up in a bit, but... 20 pound braid on a bass rod with a bit of 20 pound mono as a leader should should catch just about anything that's in here so far as I'm aware catch anything nothing nothing hey have you been to that side no not over there the other bridge and uh, you can drive back there way back there Check it out. All right, I'll do that. You're in the wrong spot. Well, just because he's crazy doesn't Thank mean he's wrong. Thank you so much for coming to us. Shut up. All right, let's let's do what he said. Give it a shot. Well, guys, have I ever mentioned how much I hate it? When crazy people are right. We came down here to the other side where this guy told me to go. He said the other bridge and less than you know three quarters of the way there not only have I seen several I think three different species of, uh, of water water bird that would prey on fish. Uh, I saw an egret, I saw what I believe to be an osprey and then a cormorant and those three birds are good signs there's fish in here. Not only did that happen but walking down this pathway Try to get you guys a look at them. Guys, these aren't carp. These are the biggest mullet I have ever seen. Freshwater or saltwater. I'm gonna try to sneak up on them. There they are. They're coming right up into the rocks. All right guys, well the mullet seem to have moved on for now. So what I'm doing is I'm just mixing up a bit of ground bait. And I'm gonna have a go at some carp. I saw some fish come up and turn over a little bit further out in the deeper water. So I know what I saw the first time was definitely an armored catfish, which is still my number one to catch fish right now, at least uh, in the Houston area. But where there are armored catfish, they're almost always carp because they, they virtually eat the same thing and they eat it in a very similar way. So they're really drawn to similar environments that harbor similar food sources. So what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna use something that I have not created but modified. So I am gonna use what is called a bolt rig. Now a bolt rig is basically, it's a fishing, it's a fishing leader and, and weight apparatus that is designed specifically for carp. It works on other fish, but it's designed for carp. So let me show you the basics of my version of it and explain how it works. So what you've got is you've got your hook. This is a traditional carp hook, and it's snell knotted with 100 pound braid. Now, disclaimer, you do not need 100 pound braid to catch carp, unless you're fishing for like Siamese carp in Asia. Uh, the reason I'm using 100 pound braid is because I don't have any coated braid, and I like the thickness of 80 to 100 pound braid. It won't cut the fish's jaw, just so I can't fish again. It won't cut the fish's jaw when there's pressure applied. You know, you could catch a carp 
you know, a big carp. You can catch a carp up to 20 plus pounds on eight pound monofilament. I've done it many times. But when the thinner the line gets, the easier it is to cut into the animal. And I want to avoid that. So thick 100 pound braid is our leader. Coming down here, I've got, and this is where things get a little bit different. I've got a three way swivel with a, the, just the end of a snap swivel attached to a two ounce lead sinker. Now, this is a European fishing method, and they have specific rigs designed for this. And they're, they're very technical. Um, you have a lot of fish safety devices where the lead can drop off if it gets snagged. Um, sometimes they're inline sinkers that are designed to mimic rocks. The idea is you cast it out, the fish picks up the bait and begins to move off. The hook gets set in the corner of its mouth just ever so slightly. And then that panics the fish when he feels the weight of that lead and he just swims off in a panic, hence the bolt rig, it causes the fish to bolt. And you gotta use these with a particular type of reel that has a bait running feature on it. So you see this little lever on the back? Watch, if that lever's up and the drag is engaged, it's however you set your drag. But if I flip the switch, even on a tight drag, look at this, the fish can take line off the spool and it will alert you to the fish's presence so you can set the hook proper and catch the fish. Now I do have an actual swim feeder, which is a device that you use to, uh, it's both a lead to sink your, your bait and to squish ground bait around. But instead of using that, I really wanna use this bolt rig. So I'm actually just gonna put the flat weight onto the pile of ground bait, squish it down, kind of fold it over the top and squeeze it all together. Now this is not a distance casting technique. You try to hurl this 100 yards and you'll see your bait fly one way and your hook and, and leader fly another way. But I am just doing that right there. And I'm gonna put a little bit of corn on the end and I am gonna to toss it 10 feet in front of us. You're fishing with tackle that is this light. You know, uh, Fish on. Oh. into the rocks but but that's the second take we've had second take we've had on this rig in the same spot which makes me confident it will happen again oh, I should have I should have stood up you know that's a problem I used to have when I was fishing for uh, full reds on the Freeport jetties so you set the hook, you sit down because it takes so long for them to, you know, take the bait. You set the hook, and that's a tip for you guys. When you're fishing in an area with a lot of rocks, stand up as soon as you set the hook. Because what you're doing, you can imagine the rocks sloping like this. Your bait's here, and you're here. If you stand up, you increase that angle of your line going over the rocks. So, like, here's rocks, here's the line. This is you sitting down. This is you standing up. my tried and true technique of a rolled up piece of bread. All right, rolled up piece of bread. Cast that out there, see what happens. I see him, I see that carp, he is right, not that far, I'm gonna draw it back in over him. I don't want the splash from the cast to scare him away. Guys, there's carp and mullet just all over the place. Okay, something picked up the bread and dropped it. Something picked it up and dropped it again. There's a carp. Guys, I've never seen so many carp feeding in one spot. There's at least five or six of them now. Fish are all starting to get really excited. It's feeling bold enough to take it. <gasps> Carp just rushed it. Carp just rushed the bait.
Oh, fish on, got him. Okay, okay. I just gotta walk all the way over here and get the net. There he goes. Got some fight in him. Got some fight in him. And he's in the net. Oh, look at this, guys. Beautiful, beautiful Asian nice. grass carp. Anyway, beautiful Asian grass carp. Looks very much like a mullet, but I can see both mullet and carp in there. They... Looks very much like a mullet, but I can see both mullet and Asian grass carp in there, so I know I'm not just having a case of mistaken identity. There's more than one species in there. But really lovely fish very different shape of a mouth than most carp. Most carp have a very round mouth that extends to suck up material off the bottom of the water. These guys, their mouth is much, much smaller in diameter and it's located at the front of their face like so. So they can actually feed on smaller, smaller plant-based material. And that's the problem with these fish, really. You know, traditional European or common carp will eat various types of plants, but this guy is a specialist and in lakes all throughout North America, especially in uh, like Lake Austin and, and uh, I believe Lady Bird Lake in uh, Austin or near Austin, these things have just destroyed native plant species because they are specially designed to eat plants growing through the water. But still, a really cool fish nonetheless. They put up a great fight as you saw. I'm super happy with this catch. I would love to catch some more. The fish are really active feeding right now. so. Let's keep at it. Beautiful animal.